thank you very much for coming. Um, I distributed some uh, maps. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get enough uh, for everybody. So if you want to theme up or share it, we'll give you a, a visual of the area that I will talk about today. Um, so I will talk basically in you know, the IDB approach uh, to assess impacts on flamingos of a transmission line. About a year ago, uh, the IDB was approached to finance a geothermal plant in a transmission line of uh, 170 kilometers in the South Department of Potosi in Bolivia. Um, the project is located within the boundaries, the boundaries of our, our Ramsar site in a natural reserve uh, where the population of flamingos is important. I'll talk about, more about that in the, in the course of the presentation. Uh, but when we received the EIA, uh, when I started to review the EIA, we had a lot of problems. The EIA was very weak, the data were insufficient to determine you know, what could be the impacts on flamingos. And uh, we were unable also to determine if the project was going to be implemented in an area, uh, uh, what we call a critical habitat. And for your information, for the environmental policy of the Inter-American Development Bank, the bank cannot support a project that leads to a significant conversion or degradation of a critical habitat. So we had a problem that we had no data to opine on this. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the project area is located in the uh, south department of Potosi, south of Bolivia, the border of Chile and Argentina. Uh, those who have a map or you can share it with, with your neighbors, you have a better sense of the project. So here, we don't see that much. The green line is the transmission line of 170 kilometer. The geothermal plant is going to be built right here. Right here, we have a, a, a laguna, with, uh, in English, lagoon, uh, lagoon Colorado. And on, on the other side of the transmission line, we have plenty of small wetlands, which are home also to uh, flamingo population. Here's the boundaries. Purple, the boundaries of the natural uh, reserve. Oh no, pardon me, the, the boundaries of the Ramsar site, and here the boundaries of the natural reserve. So we're definitely in a sensitive habitat. The project area is home to three species of flamingos the James flamingo, the, uh, the Andean flamingos, and the Chilean flamingo. The Andean flamingo is of particular concern because it's listed as a vulnerable uh, species. And there are some talks actually that the James Flamingo, the smaller one, is also uh, to be put on the list, uh, well, to be a, a, a listed as a vulnerable because it faces increasing threats in the, in the Bolivia area. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we had to do, we uh, identify significant gaps in the EIA. So we figure out that we need to do additional studies. Uh, we didn't have enough uh, information on the population. We had a vague idea of the population of flamingos, 50,000, 60,000 at some point, but we have no clear data. Also, we have no information on their local flight patterns. Uh, we know that their migratory routes, when they arrive, these three flamingos that I, I mentioned earlier, they also live in Chile, Argentina, and Peru. During when the summer season starts, they travel to Bolivia. And we know the migration route does not uh, cross over the transmission line. So we have no concern in that. But we know that when they arrive in Bolivia and they stay for the summer period, for about six, mo six months, their hub is Laguna Colorada. But we have uh, identification that they disperse to other lagunas. But we didn't have no information on their local flight pattern. The dynamic was totally unknown. Uh, we also had no idea about what could be the potential impacts of the transmission line as the literature on collision with flamingos, collision of flamingos on transmission line is very poor and uh, nothing was done in Bolivia and there's a, uh, incipient uh, studies all over the world at, at this level. What we know though is that flamingos are big birds, <laughs> large wingspans, and they uh, have a maneuverability that is very low, so they don't turn like this. So it's very, uh, they could be exposed at the risk of collision. So what we, uh, the first thing that we uh, got as a result is that we were able to have a better sense of their uh, numbers in the project area. 
And actually, at some point of the year, uh, if you see the table here, you have almost 60% of the population of James flamingos that is found in the project area in December. They reproduce there, mainly. You have the Andean flamingo, 23%, and the Chilean flamingo, only less than 1%, because the Chilean flamingo prefer Chile. <laughs> And uh, we also had a survey about uh, the population abundance in Laguna Colorada, which is right where the geothermal plant will be built. And uh, we have some statistic data from December to April. The studies were conducted for uh, these couple of months. And December is the, where you have a concentration of 30 flamingos uh, present in Laguna Colorada. About their flight patterns, uh, these maps actually shows uh, where do they fly. Here's uh, yeah, Laguna Colorada, and they fly to other you know small you know wetlands nearby. Here's the transmission line, so you can see that they cross the transmission line. And this other maps, and I have like dozens of other maps that shows other you know flight paths. So they they are coming back to the Laguna Colorada. So there's a back and forth movement. And the researcher we hire is a top expert in Flamingo, uh, a Bolivian top expert. And uh, he did his observation based on a ringing program. About 10 years ago, Chile, Argentina, Peru, they started to ring thousands of flamingos. So his observations was focusing on those who were ringed to increase their reliability of their observation. And we found out that they can travel you know, pretty far. And actually, those who were born in Laguna Colorada, because of their ringing program, they identify uh, the place they were born. They, they are very faithful. They come back over there. So we discovered that uh, along the way, this uh, movement of uh, back and forth, and they travel long distance. Now, with the transmission line, as uh, I mentioned earlier, you know, there's no transmission line yet to the project. Uh, one of 170 kilometers will be built. We ask uh, the the, the top experts, the Bolivian experts, to find, you know, somewhere in Bolivia where there is an existing transmission line and where flamingos population are also present. Identify a place a little bit up north, you know, four hours, five hours north by car, and it's a transmission line of about 30 meters high, and there's no mitigation uh, device installed on this one. And what happened is that he, he, went, he chose this segment because we had a, a population of flamingos, about 4,000 flamingos living there. <coughs> Refer to the south where you have, can reach you know, 65,000 uh, flamingos who are present over there. And he went back every week uh, to do uh, body counts of flamingos, he, the same segment, you know, the 20.5 uh, uh, kilometers. Uh, over uh, 14 weeks, he started in December and he stopped in April because in April, flamingos go back to Chile, Argentina, you know, the, the, the winter is coming. And uh, the results came and I have to tell you, the results were not where, what we expected. It was much worse than we anticipated. Over 14 weeks, uh, we had a total, uh, you know, 40 flamingos uh, that collide with the transmission line. And we had uh, about 12 flamingos that we were unable to identify because body parts were missing. They were picked up you know, by predators, the Andean fox. But we suspect the, that they were Andinas. As you can see, and if you remember at the beginning of the presentation, the Andean flamingo is the vulnerable one. And unfortunately, you know, it's the one that seems to collide more. What I can say also about these statistics is that we correlate these numbers with the weather condition. And even when it rains, and even when it's not raining, we still have the collision. So it was uh, not the results that we expected. 